Hi, Danny. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. You? Good, thanks. Welcome to my crib. Thank you. Let's have a look. Yeah. All first impressions, very authentic. You, you haven't <laughs> made your bed beautifully or anything no, like haven't. that. I appreciate that. So yeah. can, we, can we take the rest of what's in the sure. room at face value? Yeah, of course. You've got a retirement card. Yeah, yeah so that was from my JCR committee. Um, they have a great sense of humour. Um, and that's them on the mantelpiece, that, that the photo right there. There are about 20 of us. So when did you retire? So I retired um, January 1st of this year. Oh, I see. So it's been very recent. You've got a very, <laughs> very full, rich book collection. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. talk us through yeah. it? Oh, so I think the best one is actually not on, oh, it's right here. Um, it's when I left uh, to come to, um, very to, aesthetic. to Cambridge. Yeah, um, I come from New Brunswick, which is a small, very small province on the east coast of Canada. And uh, my friends got me this book to, rem to remind me of home, and I, I cruise it every once in a while because it's, it's re actually yeah. really beautiful. And have you got yeah. any other ones you, you can highlight, any ones that are particularly special? I got this when I was 12. Oh my god. Like all Co House of Commons procedure, procedure and practice. practice. Um, because did you ask for that when you were 12? I, I did actually. I was a very weird child. Um, and I read it, uh, I think, about once through, and I just like to cruise it every once in a while. It's from home. It reminds me of, of uh, uh, my, my life, my interest in politics. And uh, yeah, so and finally, if, God if that doesn't make me super weird, I don't know what will. <laughs> all, all Cambridge students are in their own way. And finally, just got to note this as well. Yeah. A card <laughs> from Downing Street itself. Oh my God, yeah. And, 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 who, and who's it from in particular? Uh, it's from, from uh, Theresa May. And is that, is that an authentic... Theresa and Philip May signature. I'm sure um, the printers were very, very good. I, I really doubt that she signed them all herself. Oh, and it lo looks like you've been doing some arts and crafts as well. Yeah, anyway. actually. Um, so I, thanks, thanks for pointing this out. Um, every Friday I work with um, youth in the city um, in one of the more kind of underprivileged areas of the city. And uh, we do a lot of arts and crafts and we, we play games and it's a lot of fun. And it's actually something that really brightens up every one of my weeks because it's, it's just so much fun to get out of the Cambridge bubble and to to uh, meet young people who are really vibrant and, and thriving. Lovely, so let's have a look at your manifesto. Sounds good. Right, so we're sat down now, it's time for the, for the grilling. Yeah. Um, first of all, it's nice to actually see you here. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here uh, and, to, and to invite you into my, to my crib. Well, particularly nice because last time we spoke, you said that there were no plans to be Kusu president. Yeah. Well, there, there, there were plans created, I'm, I'm afraid. So, and on, on the spirit of that, you said at the time that it takes a lot of patience, um, it's dealing with a lot of issues that you're not necessarily caught up on, um, and needs someone who's totally committed to growing the union, yeah. and you weren't sure at the time whether that was you. So just wondering if, you're, if your views on that have changed. Well, I think um, through the, the Kusha Financial Inquiry and through my work on the JCR, um, I think I've, I've really gained a, a set of skills and knowledge of how KUSU works and how the university works that will hopefully... And have you caught up on the issues that you, you said you weren't caught up on at the time? Um, I think so. Um, I think one of the, the main issues um, in particular is uh, the issue about uh, changing the burden of proof um, from uh, beyond a reasonable doubt to um, uh, the balance of probabilities. Uh, that's so the, the proof of what, sorry? The burden of proof uh, in the university disciplinary procedures. Right, yeah. Um, that's a really complex legal issue. I, su I support the change. Um, I've, I think I've gained quite a bit of information or a kind of understanding of that particular issue, which is going to be a huge one uh, going forward because there are a lot of moving parts within the university and a lot of different people we yeah. need to consult. And so are you now totally committed to, to growing KUSU? I am. I think it's, a, it's an important organisation. I think there are significant challenges. I think um, at the moment the deficit in particular is, is a really, really profound structural issue that needs to be tackled. Sure. Yeah. And, and one of the policies you have in your manifesto is a welfare Tompkins table. Yeah. So sort of a league table for how well different yeah. colleges are doing in terms of looking after students. You mentioned highlighting the number of intermissions and things. Yeah. I was just wondering how, how that would work in practice because it, it seems like a very complicated thing to do. Yeah, so that's a, a really good point. Um, it's a, it is very complex. Um, the good thing is, uh, two years ago, the uh, president of CUSU at the time, Priscilla Mensa, absolutely lovely woman who, who did a lot of really great work at the university, um, really started on this kind of project and really yeah, well I understand she proposed it and but then didn't quite manage to follow it through so, so the thing is I would I would be a tricky thing to do I would actually defend her because I've seen the, the the draft copy of what she had created and it was pretty actually quite effective 
I would say the issue was, it's the kind of proposal that um, needs to have follow-up in, in future years. So a lot of her kind of basic groundwork around kind of collecting data, while slightly out of date, it's a lot of it's from October 2016, um, can be kind of updated because we have the categories now. We, we really have kind of figured out the various um, different aspects. Have you come up with a way of sort of differentiating between different kinds of intermission, for example? Probably the, these sorts of things are, you know, real case by case situation. Absolutely, they're huge real. amount of personal. They're real case back, by case backstory. issues. Absolutely. So if you if you're putting it into a league table and turning these things into numbers, is that is that not quite a dangerous game, really? No, I, I don't think so for a few reasons. If I may say so, yes, it can be case by case. But if it's case by case, you'd expect a lot more uniformity between colleges than you do at the moment. I don't accept that some colleges can have twice the uh, intermission rate, and it's just simply because they have more cases of a certain kind. I think I think that stretches. Um, but it, va it varies hugely from year to year as well. I mean, it does vary. Year, and sometimes from year it can year. just be in, a, in, a, in the name of changing a subject rather than for any mental health or, or physical uh, reasons. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm not saying that these aren't complicated issues. But what I am saying is that at the same time, we can't always take a college's word for um, what, uh, what, what kind of they say is in the best interest of students. And I think sometimes we, we take that too much of a face. Just, just finally on this, is there not a danger that this could have the same effect as league tables do on schools and make them more focused on, on making the stats look good than really the individual well-being of students. So I would say that's an that's always a concern. Is that um, uh, stats often lead people to just focus on the stat. Um, but what I would say to that is simply that at the moment it doesn't seem what we're focusing on anything. Okay. So it's it's better to start with stats and then really force cultural change than it is to say oh we can't measure anything at all because that lets a lot of people off the hook when mm. they really shouldn't be let off the hook. Yeah and. Now, you haven't really you know, made, made a song and dance of this, but you are the chair of KUKRA at the moment, the, yeah. the Conservative Association. Um, so what, how would you respond to people who say maybe you're too partisan for, for this kind of representative role? Um, I would say a few things. I, I think, first of all, um, if you're worried about me being a Tory, I would say look at my uh, record uh, on the JCR. JCR president, we did a lot more for Pride Month. Um, we made sure that any undergraduate who wanted one could have a, a feminine hygiene product for free, um, and and they were we made sure that that was a sustainable option for everyone. Um, we did a lot of great work around um, access, and and we increased welfare spending uh, during my time as JCR president. I think I have a record of success, and I think I have a record actually advocating for the issues that really matter for students. You've been looking a lot into KC finances. Is that where your your conservative ideology would, would come into no, play? No, I, I, I mean, as a conservative, I really care about fiscal matters because I think an organization cannot be credible if it cannot actually organ, um, balance its books. Having said that, I don't think the issue is an overspend problem. I think the fundamental issue is that we are the only university in the United Kingdom to not have a, a university-wide grant that is commensurate or is, is equal to the task of the services that we are supposed to provide under various pieces of legislation. And that makes it very, very difficult to really fund CUSA effectively. And I would say, I think the fundamental issue with this question in particular is that there doesn't seem to be any recognition that this should be the main priority. In two years, we're probably going to run out of funding. There, there, we will no longer have reserves to rely on. At that point, the university is going to have to bail us out. And I would expect that at that point, the university is going to ask us to make significant cuts, because after all, we did just create a new um, uh, sabbatical officer two years ago. They're probably going to ask us to cut someone else. And okay. I would say that that's unacceptable. For too many students, that would, that would create a huge problem. That would mean less representation. That would make it harder for CUSU to meet its goals. And if we don't face up to this reality now, I would say the pain that we're going to suffer in two years is far greater than we would at this point. And just finally on this, for students who are concerned that you you, are, you do currently have your, your conservative hat on, uh, your president, oh, sorry, chair this term, yeah. um, so w will you sort of, you know, re renounce that in a sense if you're elected? Will, will KUSU take priority over over? Well, I, I won't be, I won't be uh, involved in KUKA after this term anyway. Um, and I would also say um, the, the issues that KUSU faces are issues that are nonpartisan, I would say. Sure. But what about, I mean, there, there are lots of students in Cambridge who would never kiss a Tory, let alone vote for one. So what would you say to them? 
I, w I would say um, that um, I, do I don't think that this is the kind of election where your partisan affiliation should matter. Okay. And I don't think if you're a JCR president, if you're representing students and you really care about representing the most students possible, um, I don't accept that um, a partisan affiliation at a national level is a hindrance to that at all.